Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, at various places on the internet. It's just turned 5:44 p.m. according to the computer clock on uh, Wednesday, December 19, 2012. And uh, I saw uh, The Hobbit and uh, Expected Journey today. It was it was very good. Um, okay. Uh, th to start off with. I have not read the book. I haven't read The Hobbit or uh, The Lord of the Rings. Um, so this was new to me. I did read a synopsis of the book on Wikipedia or on or on Lord of the Rings week, wiki or whatever. Um, but, but that's it. I do remember that we owned the book years ago like late 80s early 90s I think it was a leftover from like I think it was like my brother or sister's book like from high school or something like maybe they had to read it for class or something uh, but I read a few pages of it back then years ago and I don't even remember much of it uh, anyway so alright the, the book's like 300 pages long. Uh, I'm talking about like the uh, the the uh, gold uh, the gold trim uh, like edition of like the 2001 edition or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's been through a lot of revisions, but uh, anyway. So they're they're turning it into a trilogy. think the book justifies it but anyway the, the movie was very good um I after I saw the movie I went into Kmart and I looked through the book and it looks like they went through about the first hundred pages of the novel out of 300 and j just by looking at uh, Tolkien's prose it, it looks like a lot of times he seems to like be describing what goes on, but it's not like it's not too much in in detail. So um, it looks like what they did for the movie is they really filled in details, and padded it out, and stuff. And, and of course, there's like uh, the framing sequence at the beginning. And first, I was confused as to when it's supposed to occur, but apparently, it occurs after uh, the background sequence narrated by Galadriel in uh, *The Fellowship of the Ring*, but before uh, the main sequence starts. And I'm talking about the extended edition, too, uh, where it starts off with, you know, Bilbo writing his. Uh, his book it looks like it starts like it starts like right before that because uh, at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring Bilbo's you know he's writing his um, book and Frodo had already gone out to meet uh, Gandalf and in this movie, the uh, the framing sequence is Bilbo is just starting on his book, and Frodo comes by, he's looking at his things and stuff, and then he says he's wondering if Gandalf's gonna show up to the party, and he has to remind Bilbo that it's his birthday party, and then he says he's going out to to surprise Gandalf. Okay, so that that's where the framing sequence occurs, and uh, apparently. Um, then, then it goes 60 years earlier and starts into The Hobbit. Um, okay, so I, I thought the cast was all very good. They did a good job. Um, the overall tone is a bit more on the comedic, silly side more so than The Lord of the Rings. And and The Hobbit itself as a story as a whole seems to be a, a lot more like 
low scale and lightweight compared to the Lord of the Rings, which is to be expected, obviously. Um, but I, I mean, like the the graphics and the fight sequences and stuff are all still top notch. They're still all very well done. Uh, it's just that the stakes aren't as high. I mean, the, the basic story is that Gandalf is, uh, he's gathering together a group of, uh, dwarves to reclaim their uh, home beneath the Lonely Mountain, and he promised them a 14th member, and that's where he goes and he recruits, uh, Bilbo, out of the blue, uh, supposedly because, um, Hobbits can easily hide and uh, not get noticed, and, and their smell isn't as familiar to the enemies as the dwarf smell is. Anyway, and a lot of the movie seems to be taken up by the dwarves' uh, silly antics, especially at the beginning when they arrive at Bilbo's house. It might have gone on for a bit too long. Um, yeah, yeah, there were times that I, I I felt my mind wandering, honestly. I mean, e even during the action, like, the action was, like, really drawn out. But mostly it's just, like, small-scale battles, you know, the dwarves versus um, the goblins or the... Or uh, dwarves versus orcs, or whatever. Um, the the main thing is they have to go reclaim their home, uh, and th there's this dragon named Smog uh, that caused all of this devastation like e years or decades earlier, and they have to defeat Smog. So this, if you think about it, not only is it very much smaller scale than the Lord of the Rings in terms of, you know, relative importance to the to the world of Middle Earth, but um, it it also seems kind of like a like a typical D and D adventure. Uh, but yeah, I I still enjoyed watching it, um, let's see, uh, oh, uh, they add in a scene with, like, Gandalf meeting with, uh, I believe it's called the White Con Consul, uh, Saruman and, uh, Elrond and, uh, Galadriel, uh, by, by the way, Galadriel is just as as stunning as ever. It looks like she has an age today. Um, she might be one of my one of my favorite Lord of the Rings characters. Uh, and she had some really good. I mean, I, I like the whole meeting scene and her scene alone with Gandalf was really good too. Um, okay. I, I guess there's not a, a whole lot to see about the plot. I mean, oh, yeah, uh, at Bilbo finds the ring, and, and this launches into the next thing that I want to talk about is, is uh, continuity with the Lord of the Rings. The situation in which uh, Bilbo finds the ring is different than in the... Uh, Backstory featured in the Fellowship of the Ring, um, where he just happened to stumble upon it there, and he picked it up and went, "Oh, a ring!" Here, he uh, he sees like Gollum drop it, and then he he picks it up later on, and he looks at it for a bit, and then he stuffs it in his pocket. He doesn't he doesn't say, "Oh, a ring" or anything like that. So the situation's a bit different. But you can chalk that up to uh, the backstory in uh, at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring being, you know, Galadriel's story that she's telling, and she might not 
know every specific detail of what happened. Like, what we're seeing could be, like, what she's envisioning of how it happened. So, um, yeah, let's go with that. Um, <laughs> another thing uh, is regarding uh, the Witch King or whatever. Um, in uh, The Return of the King, uh, I believe it was uh, that uh, Eowyn had, uh, had killed him. Um, because he said no man can defeat me and she said I am no man and she kills him in this movie in uh, The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey it's mentioned that he'd already been killed now apparently he's like some kind of necromancer that can resurrect the dead or something so if he's already been killed then that's kind of at odds with you know with the return of the king. Um, yeah, so, so that was pretty weird. Uh, what else? Um, I, I, I saw it in regular 2D and um, I, I didn't bother with 3D, and I did not see it at the high frame rate. Um, there, there's in fact no theater around in my area that that has that capability. Um, well, honestly, I'm kind of uh, curious as to what it looks like at uh, 48 frames per second. I mean, I would like to see that. Uh, maybe maybe when it hits Blu-ray. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So so I think that's about all that I have to say about this film. Uh, it, it's it's very long, <laughs> um, and it covers like only the first hundred pages of the novel. Of course, you've got all that extra stuff in there as well. Um, is it worth seeing? Yeah, yeah, go see it, definitely. Um, but just keep in mind that it's, like, it's not as epic as The Lord of the Rings. I, I mean, it, it's a noble adventure, but. At the same time, it, I, I mean, it, it could have been done as one movie, I think, or, or two at most. But no, they're going to make it into a trilogy, and apparently they're going to be relying on the appendices a lot um, to pad it out into a trilogy. So, but yeah, um, go see it, and... And I think that's all that I have to say. Uh, it's 5.57pm and that's it. Thanks for watching.